Welcome back to another episode of Quick Charge by Electrek. I'm your host, Joe Boris. It is May 29th. We're going to start today with coverage of Kia's EV9. The EV9 is expected to reach sales of 50,000 units within its first year of launch with strong overseas demand. This is a no-brainer here. This shouldn't surprise anybody. Kia's three-row SUV is right in the market that everybody wants to be in. This is the hottest segment in the U.S. right now, and Kia has a product that looks great. It's not too weird. It's not too out there. It doesn't draw attention, but it still looks very high-end. People love this thing. I think 5,000 units in April is strong, and you're going to keep seeing more and more records. Now, I, the reason I bring up those 5,000 units in April is because Kia continues to show strong EV growth. April was a record month for them, and they're going to continue to be putting in solid numbers as long as they keep coming out with vehicles, not only like the EV9, but they're continuing to update vehicles that are existing. Their EV6 they recently updated. They're coming out with the EV3 and EV4. This is just a solid product, and Kia is making all the right moves. Now, one of the things that you often hear about when you listen to people talk about objections to EVs is this idea that these electric vehicles are powered by coal, they're powered by dirty fuel, things like that. Number one, that's all nonsense. Even if every electric vehicle on the road was powered by a diesel generator at the electrification plant, it's still much more efficient to drive an EV. They're not burning fuel while they're idling. They're not wasting fuel in transportation. It's infinitely more efficient to convert that fuel into energy at the power station, transmit it, store it in a battery, store it in the battery inside the EV, and then drive it around and use it to produce forward motion, which is something that can't be said of diesel or gasoline when they're, it's being burned inside of an engine that's at idle. But the good news is that that kind of argument, no matter how compelling it might be to people who don't understand concepts like efficiency at a plant level or engine efficiency, thermal efficiency, renewables are continuing to grow and become a bigger and bigger slice of the energy grid. According to this article published today by Michelle Lewis, renewables provided almost 30% of U.S. electrical generation in March. That's a huge number. We saw 40.5% share of Q1 in 2024 for uh, natural gas. That continues to drop to 39.4%. This is something you're going to start to see more and more. We're going to see more solar. We're going to see more wind. And even in the natural gas segment, we're starting to see more natural gas come from renewable sources. Now, what does renewable natural gas really mean? That is something that if you look at a farm scenario or industrial farming, where they are capturing methane, they're capturing gases that normally would be vented into an atmosphere, they are capturing that and burning it as fuel. Is it good? No. Is it better than letting it go out of the atmosphere? I think that's debatable, but it's certainly better than going into the ground to mine for new natural gas with fracking and any other sources like that. So this is still very positive stuff, and it's an important thing to have in mind as you talk to people who are, let's say, spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt articles, spreading those, I don't want to say lies, I think that puts too aggressive a tone on it, but people who are spreading misinformation Maybe they're doing it on purpose. Maybe they're doing it because they just don't know any better. But people who are spreading misinformation about EVs are always going to go back to this idea that the power generation is dirty. It's not, and it's getting cleaner every day. So we want to definitely touch on that. And that becomes critically important because as we do away with some of that fear, uncertainty, and doubt, we're going to see more demand for electric vehicles. And as we see more demand for electric vehicles, we see more demand for less expensive electric vehicles. Now, right around the time that we started talking about Tesla abandoning plans for a $25,000 EV, you're starting to see other manufacturers step up and try to bring something to production. Now, Volkswagen is going a step further. They aim to debut a number of new affordable EVs in 2027 with prices around $22,000. Now, again, that jump from 22 to 25 doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's more than a 10% jump. So that is, in fact, I think a significant number. So Volkswagen is aiming for its new low-cost electric vehicle to debut in 2027 and expected to be priced around $21,800 US dollars or about 20,000 euros. I think that paired with the Volkswagen brand name, this is going to be a new age Jetta. Now, when I was growing up, coming up in this 
industry in the 90s. The Jetta was the car that everyone's grandparents bought someone. If you were going away to college, you got a Jetta. If you were buying your first car after your first job, a Jetta was almost always the way that people went. If they had a sense of wanting something a little more premium, a little upscale, something dependable, something reliable, something that was good looking. So I think something like that coming back, especially coming back to the States at this time, it's electric. It's going after a younger market, maybe retirees as well. I think that's going to be another model that sells tremendously well. Moving on to the next story, as we talked about Tesla, there's a ton of changes going on at Tesla. We talk about the not only the uh, the vote that's going on right now for Elon's $56 billion compensation package, but there's a tremendous amount of layoffs and all sorts of things that are affecting that company's future and that company's plans for the future. Despite all that, Mexico still believes that Tesla is going to build a gigafactory there in that country. The Mexican state of Nuevo Leon still believes that the previously announced Tesla gigafactory is coming despite all of the recent changes. Now, we talk a little bit about this within the article. Some of the Mexican officials are quoted as having said, we have not had any change in signal. We also work hand in hand with them. For example, right now in the incentive contract, the communication is very close. We continue working. The only thing that I could not say and is not defined is when they're going to start. But Tesla is coming. Tesla is coming. On their side, the government official says they are still investing in the infrastructure to enable Tesla to build the Gigafactory. This is an interesting take because we have existing Gigafactories currently, not only in the United States, but in Europe that are not operating at capacity. This is not the Tesla of two or three years ago that was running 24 hours, that was maxing out capacity, that had waiting lists for its vehicles. We are now starting to see even cyber trucks allegedly showing up on uh, inventory sheets and ready for immediate delivery. This is not the same company that it was when it started talking about expanding into Mexico. Now, does that mean that they're not going to expand into Mexico? Does that mean that we're not going to see a revolutionary new product that comes out in a couple of months? That's uh, you know whether it's the Robo Taxi or the twenty five thousand dollar Tesla or whether those are one and the same. It's hard to say. But I think we are starting to reach some kind of natural limit in the sense of what kind of market share can we realistically expect for a vehicle that's been visually the same for eight years and that is now facing a tremendous amount of competition with a very controversial owner. I don't know. I think this is a, a sketchy proposition. I don't know that I'd bet a ton of money on this, but this is a perfect thing for you guys to come into the comments and blast me about. So let's keep doing that. While we're on the subject of Tesla, Tesla has a new way to get shareholders to vote. You could win a factory tour with Elon and Franz. Tesla has come up with another program to encourage shareholders to vote in the upcoming shareholders meeting with a way to win a factory tour with Elon Musk and Franz von Holzhausen. Now, it's interesting here, they talk a little bit in the article, this is Fred's article, about what is required to be eligible for this. Now, it's interesting, it says you should only submit proof that you voted, not how you voted. You do not need to vote for or against any proposals to be eligible for entry. You are eligible to vote and to enter the drawing only if you are a stockholder of record or a beneficial owner at the close of business on April 15th, 2024. And Fred points out it would be Pretty awkward factory tour if someone who voted against Elon's compensation package wins. I don't know that that's necessarily true, especially if he's not asking you for it. I think there's probably plenty of people who are fans of Elon, who think the world of the guy, who think he's a genius, who believe in the great man theory of history and all this stuff, who would love to go on a factory tour with him, but who also genuinely believe that he is not really what's best for the company right now, or maybe he is what's best for the company right now, but he's still not worth what is effectively the market capital of GM. So put this another way. If you look at the market cap of competing automotive companies, instead of giving Elon $56 billion, the shareholders at Tesla could effectively use that money to buy a controlling interest in General Motors, which arguably might be a better move. So I think that's something that we really need to put into context here. I know someone else posted recently that the recent round of layoffs, you could have given everyone who was laid off like three and a half million dollars or something that still wouldn't add up to Elon's compensation package that he's asking for. Now, keep in mind, this is not money that he had that was taken away from him. This is still all shares. This is still 
shares of stock that can then be sold. And the only way that, that he gets money out of this is to sell it back out or to borrow against it. So it, it's an interesting conundrum and um, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all plays out. Moving on to the next story. Meet Vasev and its ultra efficient electric hydrofoil boat designed for smooth tourist rides. This is kind of a cool story. You're starting to see a lot more electrification in power sports, whether it's the marine industry, personal watercraft, light and medium sized boats, as well as motorcycles and ATVs and things like that. This is really interesting. It, it kind of takes off after the Candela and after the flight board and other hydrofoil lifting body type water vehicles. This is something that I think is going to be a lot of fun for people recreationally who like to enjoy you know, power boating and speed boats and things like that. And it's going to do that and generate a minimal wake. So even in a no wake zone, I think there's some argument you made that you'll be able to get up to good speed. Probably still get some tickets for that, but still fun. Definitely check out this article by Scooter Dolls posted earlier today and uh, let us know what you think of that. That's it for today. Again, that was May 29th. Joe Boris, I'll be with you again tomorrow with the latest news, the world of electrification. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow along.